Yeah, it's the 10th of February, yes. No, I'm, yeah. I'm not, in my case, I'm Oscar, I'm not going. I think I have something else here. Mm -hmm. oh, I have something close, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, if, if, if you haven't been... No, I haven't, been, I haven't been told, and I, I guess I'm not going. <laughs> Maybe the ninth, someone will tell me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Hanin Han will be the one who makes the decision of what's best for the project, but anyone who's not coming, I'm sure uh, they will be invited to join online um, somehow. Um, but it may be quite late. Okay, so it's uh, currently it's 7.30, um, so we're going to start uh, the, the conference call. So from 7.30 to 7.55, we'll be having uh, open questions or discussions that, uh, that you want to have with Brian and I or with our other collaborators uh, that are currently online. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, yeah, we'll be, uh, Brian and I will be here, um, so if you have any questions, please ask. And you can also utilize the, the message box that's provided in the application, so you can type out your questions. Can you repeat? So, Vincent, uh, Vincent, it's Pepe here. Can you hear me, Vincent? Yeah, I can hear you. So, also, would you and Brian have questions for people at EBI? This also be a good opportunity that you two could ask questions. Yeah. Um, so. Hi, so Antonio. Yes. Uh, so, uh, which which tools will you be uh, presenting um, on? Yeah. Well, in principle, uh, Henning and I were talking uh, last week, and he said that uh, the presentation, uh, we were, well, the idea was to introduce uh, Reactom uh, and what <coughs> Reactom, because the pathway portal that is mentioned in BD2K is uh, actually is. is is similar to React because what we are doing, we are developing stuff for the pathway portal, and then we are including this uh, element into React. Okay, so React is React plus stuff of the pathway portal. And then what I will be intro uh, explaining is uh, the pathway browser is the, the tool that uh, you can find in React to browse the pathways, and then the the analysis tool. And well, the analysis tool. Uh, if we don't go in uh, very deep detail, it's, it's easy to <laughs> to explain because basically, it's, uh, I suppose everyone knows what a pathway analysis is. And what the analysis tool does is just to analyze the user data against the Reactom content. And and then now uh, we are in in our current project or the one that uh, is under development is uh, the Fireworks project that uh, I think I, I showed that to Howard in the past when he came to the ABI. Well, anyway, I, I can present you a little bit what Fireworks is. And the idea is just to show a map of the pathways in Reactor, all the pathways together, with the, this is a graph that represents the parent-child child relationship. So you don't have reactions in this, in this, in this graph, you only have pathways. Uh, but but by, show, by showing all the pathways in a plane, uh, then you can see uh, well you, you can you can have a better a good understanding of, of what the relationship between the different top level pathways in Reactom is. And then when you analyze your data, we are now creating an overlay on top of this fireworks that shows you where your sample has hit in the map of Reactom in a graphical way. Okay. 
and that is uh, that is what is current uh, under development and I yeah and well depending on how technical we want to go <laughs> we can talk more about development or more about usage of the tools okay so I've got okay. one question concerning this which and it was quite clear at the end of the discussion last time um, do we have the full slot, so a kind of double slot, or do we have a single slot for Reacto? I'm happy either way, but we need to know for the preparation. Um, so do you, do you require uh, both slots, so about an hour? For the no, we don't. So it was just last time it was one, the first slot was Reacto, and the second was Pathways Portal, so that would have been as... Um, Antonio explained now that would have basically been one talk or across a double slot. We are happy to do only a single slot. It's really just for knowing what we should prepare for. Okay. Uh, yeah, so a single single slot would be uh, fine. Okay, fine. Thank you. So but honey, would you prefer we, we reserve the full slot as this is sort of the beginning? that you could see what are the old options that we could communicate and integrate so we understand it better? Because that's how we're actually essentially doing it at our part. The Proton and Kava KB occupy a full slot. Then let's do it like this, then we have time to go a bit more into detail. I think, um, okay. as, said, as we are at the beginning, that's probably a better option because the normal single slot is quite tight if, you, if we go into discussion. Sounds great. Okay, um, I've got another question, which is on the PI meeting, which is following this meeting. So in the, um, in the Google Calendar, it's supposed to start in from now on in one hour. But Pepe, your reminder would mean that, which you sent this morning, would mean that the PI meeting would start in one and a half hours from now. So what is the plan? So the PI meeting, uh, you mean the leadership committee meeting? Yeah. So that starts from now on Friday, 9 to 10. Okay, so then it needs to be updated in the Google Calendar, so, and I can't do that because I don't have right access to that. Could you just push it back by half an hour? Yeah, I'll, I'll change that. Thank you. So essentially, the presentations in technical call will end, then the leadership committee meeting starts, but the technical call can continue with another hour if uh, there are discussions uh, about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you all having looking into the travel schedule for February 10th meeting. As far as I know, that should be more or less sorted out on our side. So uh -huh. in the hands of, the, of our group um, secretary, and I gave her the contact on your side. I'm not sure if it's sorted down to the last detail, but we have basically sent the flights we plan to have. W wonderful. So, so you are arriving on Monday? No, we will at least we are in the end. We will show up. Um, where Justin Pashal um, will be there, a delegate of Chris Steinbeck, and Antonio, who's on this call, and myself. So we will be four. Uh huh. And wonderful. I think most of us will actually show up already on Saturday because we oh, have that's wonderful. This, this giant jump in price. So if we stay over a Saturday, then the flight cost per person is about 600 pounds. 
and if we fly in on Monday as would be the most convenient, then it's about 2,300 to 2,600 pounds. Wow, wow. It's so incredible. How, how about then we organize, uh, we'll hike uh, uh, or a long walk along the beach on Sunday and then more discussions with one-on-one -on, -one on Monday. Would, would that be something reasonable? Yes, that sounds fine for me. Okay, so I'm I'm glad that I I that you guys will be here that uh, we can spend a bit more time together, um, because this is an opportunity we can get a lot of done. Yeah, I have also I think also Antonio, perhaps you can chip in here, but I think also most of us will only fly back on. Wednesday evening because um, I want I have to leave on Tuesday before the dinner because uh -huh. I'll be in Frankfurt the next day. Uh -huh. uh, most of us will actually stay for the dinner and then you have to stay anyway on Wednesday. So I think Antonio, you are flying back only in the evening, or when are you going back? Uh, Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. So most of us will also be still there, um, or at least some. Um, Wednesday. Okay, that's that's good. So this is truly then an opportunity we could discuss details on the project. Yes, I thought if we are, well, the main reason is the flights, but also I thought um, flying um, across, across the a lot of time zones for one day is not that efficient, so let's make the most out of it if we are flying anyway. Okay. And I think also early in the project, it's good to have FaceTime. Yes, yes, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, that's really excellent decision. Thank you, Henny. Uh, so the reactant presentation time is, is it next Friday? Yes, it is. Yeah. Wonderful. So. That's also great planning. So we already have heard about it uh, a little bit and then go from there. Yes. Yeah, so next week I have scheduled uh, Reactum uh, to go first at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And then at 8.30 we have uh, MyGene.info um, presented by Chunlei um, uh -huh. and Scripps. So that's our plan for next week. Uh -huh. But didn't we just say that we now have the full length slot for Reactome? Uh, a double slot? A double slot for Reactome. Only if we need it. So, um, yeah, if, if we need to have, have it for Reactome um, and have a discussion, then yeah, we can have the full slot. Uh, as I said, I don't mind, but I understood this is what we just agreed, that we would have a double slot for Reactome so that we can really go a bit into detail. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll have that. Maybe I've got another question, which um, I sent you an email uh -huh. uh, about a recent development. You will probably find it quickly when you look through your emails. Uh, which which account? Earthlink. Ooh, just a moment. I have to check that. Sorry, uh, because the MedNet is nearly completely dead. Yeah, I'm avoiding that now. So I'm pretty sure uh -huh. I send it. Could, could you? Oh, could no, you I send, sorry, I sent it only to MedNet. So I will forward it to you again to Earthlink. Earthlink. If you do, I will see it today. Because Earthlink I check every day. Um, the Gmail is every couple of hours I'm on it. Okay, so this is a relatively urgent thing. I just forwarded it to you. Okay. And if you would have time to uh, throw a quick glance at that now, because that might mean that we also have to bring forward the discussion on the um, on the data discovery interface. I, I see. So I should be able to check it in 
an hour if uh, nothing major would happen. So I am driving right now. Ah, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah. Then, then better don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then we can probably also discuss it next time. So, but there, there might but, be... Uh, but not we can discuss it today. So when I get arrive UCLA, I'll be able to check it. Okay. Yeah, so, but that's definitely, um, I haven't got uh, the flight schedule from NIH yet, so we're hoping we will receive that soon. Okay, does anyone have any more uh, questions? Okay, I'll be, uh, Brian and I will be here, so feel free to ask. Is Howard there? Uh, uh, yes. Is I'm... Howard there yet? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So I have a question for Howard and Vincent. Yeah. Uh, the cloud-based um, soap, where Hao Ming did uh, the construction, are there detailed uh, technical notes left uh, with you both, Howard? Uh. I'm speaking about the slide you have in your presentation today, which I took a quick look yesterday. So he didn't left any uh, documents, but he left some uh, comments on there. I have trouble hearing you, Howard. Uh, yes, uh, Howman didn't give any doc documentation, but he gave some co uh, the comments on his program. Uh, so, Vincent, could you put a to-do list as an action item that you and Howard would Skype you, Skype calls with Homing and uh, asking for his advice and consultation to develop a specific technical note for that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I saw him a, a few weeks ago uh, in China, he said uh, he's very committed uh, to it. He'd love to answer questions or Scott calls at any time. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, we'll we'll get on that. We'll try to we'll schedule a a Scott call with him in, um most likely next week. Uh, we just switched to an amplified microphone. Can everybody hear us all right? Oh, that's it's much better. Thank you, Brian. Yes, much better. Uh, testing. You hear? Testing. Okay. Loud and clear. Yeah, it's, like it, it's not coming out of the speaker. I'll just. just. Can we do another question? I just had a big feedback in the, in between. Uh, Brian, I guess the microphone wasn't working. Uh, you can hear us now. Yes. Yes.
ครับเวอร์สไตปิ้งนอว์ whenever we have the conference could you mute yourself if possible um, when you're typing it comes uh, through quite loudly Okay, I yeah, I'll switch a different microphone. Just one second. Uh, Henny, can you still hear the typing? No, I didn't hear anything now. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Brian, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thanks. Where are you sitting? I, I'll, I'll probably s sit here once we... Oh, sorry. So where shall I just sit? I, you don't need me, basically. I just need to be physically there and smile, so... <laughs> <laughs> Happy smiling, then. <laughs> Henning, is this you? Yes. <laughs> this is David. Yes, I noticed. <laughs> You know, if I don't, I mean, if I don't smile, everything falls apart. You know? <laughs> nice, David. Very nice. Good morning, Pei Pei. How are you? Very good. I thought that was you, but I wasn't sure if it was you or Charles Me. Um, <laughs> me. I, I, I recognize your voice. You know, I'm going to mute now. I, there is a no noise on the road, right? Okay. I am as well. Take care. I have to say, Pei Pei seems to have an amazing um, car <laughs> phone connection. I don't hear any background noise. So it's really much better than usually. Uh, can everyone see the slides being shown right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Starting uh, at about uh, four minutes, so uh, that's when our first 
presentation will begin. All right, so it's uh, about 8, 8 o'clock now, so we'll begin uh, the conference. Um, so good morning, everyone, um, for those in the U.S., and then good afternoon to our friends at, in the U.K. Um, so today we'll have uh, two presentations. The first one is COBA KB, and the second one is ProTerm. Um, before we begin our presentations, uh, I want to briefly go over the structure of the presentations. So on the screen, uh, I currently have displayed the list of uh, interfaces that uh, we've proposed to create for the BD2K project. Um, since we're starting with Copa KB and ProTurn, um, we'll try to start with the tools related to the reverse expression interface. Um, but, I mean, it's not a strict um, set that we'll be uh, sticking to. Um, but uh, the first round of presentations uh, will give us an idea of what each tool is about and how they'll be working with each other. So these presentations will really be giving an overview of the tool and we'll save the uh, technical details 
uh, for the second round of conferences. Um, and the purpose of these presentations is really to give you an idea of what the tool does and possibly um, how you can collaborate uh, with it. Uh, with regards to today's presentations, uh, each presentation will be about 20 minutes, followed by a five to 10 minute uh, Q&A portion. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, you may type it out in the message box provided in the application, um, and the presenter will uh, answer your question. So uh, any questions before we start the presentation? All right, uh, so we'll start with our first uh, presentation. Um, all right, uh, so our first presentation will be presented by Howard Choi. Uh, Howard has a master's in bioinformatics uh, and is currently uh, a bioinformatics PhD student at UCLA. He has worked uh, at the UCLA Proteomics Center for about three years. Uh, and Howard will be presenting about COPA-KB, which stands for Cardiac uh, Organellar Protein Atlas Knowledge Base. Um, it was developed under the NHLBI Proteomics Center program and created as a unique resource to facilitate understanding of no uh, novel biological insights from proteomic data sets. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce Howard Choi. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Howard Choi uh, from UCLA. Uh, I'm very glad to introduce our comprehensive cardiac proteome knowledge base, which is named COPA-KB. Uh, since our web-based platform re released in May 2011, uh, it has been utilized by uh, 7,000 distinct users who study cardiovascular disease and medicine. To give a few more statistics, uh, COPA-KB has been explored to 108 countries and users are dominantly from the US, China, UK, Germany, and India. Uh, since COPA-KB is uh, one of the key resources of the uh, BD2K project, all proteomic data and tools, as well as relevant cardiovascular pheno phenotypic information in Copa KB will be publicly accessible by RESTful API. Uh, before go over the Copa KB, I would like to introduce each member of the Copa KB tech, mem uh, tech team. Uh, Vincent Key holds a bachelor's degree in computer science. Uh, he has been working in our lab for two years as, as a computer programmer and uh, bioinformatician. Uh, as you all know, uh, he's the BD2K DSR project co coordinator, and in the pro, uh, in the Copa KB project, he mainly works on uh, database construction and uh, back end algorithm development. Uh, next, the role is uh, Esqueda is a computer programmer. Uh, he's uh, primarily working on the Copa KB website and data visualization tool. Uh, Hena Cho is also a computer programmer who is uh, currently improving uh, the functionality of our iPad application iCopa, uh, which is available in the Apple App Store for uh, those who have an iPad, and it's a free application. Uh, next, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Su is a uh, newly hired computer programmer uh, who will be working with uh, Vincent and I on the API development. And uh, lastly, uh, I'm the bioinformatics PhD student and uh, Copa KB project lead. So our presentation is composed of three parts. Uh, one, introduction to Copa KB. Two, demonstration of Copa KB usage and three, API development. I will cover the first two parts and Vincent will talk about the API development. Copa KB is a centralized platform of 
cardiac proteome data, relevant cardiovascular phenotypes, and proteomic bioinformatics tools. And uh, COPA-KB includes mass spec data, as well as curated protein molecular and biomedical phenotypic properties, uh, which are organized into the relational database, MySQL version 5.6. And COPA-KB is also interfaced to a website uh, for public data retrieval and analysis. Uh, user can perform large-scale spectral analysis over the web through the components available in COPA-KB. And I will briefly go over each step of the analysis. Uh, first, user submits their mass spec data in MZML format through either a Copa KB client or a website. Uh, then, mass spec data will transfer into the Copa KB server uh, uh, through the internet. The received the received data packets are analyzed by the Copa KB library search library search engine using the spectral library as a reference. Uh, for matched spectra, uh, the property of their corresponding proteins are retrieved from COPA-KB database automatically, which are returned to COPA-KB client. By the end of the analysis, the client, the client presents a consolidated report outlining the uh, proteome pro property encoded in the user's uh, raw mass spec data. So this is the workflow of our large-scale spectral analysis. And currently, COPA-KB features high-quality cardiac proteomic data of 10 modules uh, spanning multi multiple species and organelles within each species. Uh, this table represents all of the proteomic data that is uploaded to the public server. And there are four species, which are human, mouse, drosophila, and C. elegans, represented from a total of 4,203 LCMS MS experiments. There are also uh, 10,924 expression images of proteins in human myocardium and 413 known association between protein function and cardiac disease. So, so human mitochondria, human proteosome, mouse mitochondria, mu uh, mouse proteosome, and mouse cytosol, drosophila mitochondria, were uh, were collected by UC the sample collected by UCLA, and the rest of modules were created by uh, curated by the public resources. Uh, in addition to the wealth of knowledge available through the high quality data modules, uh, users can use Copa KB in a way to collect information about proteins and their associations with relevant cardiovascular phenotypes. Uh, there are seven distinct forms of data for this purpose. Uh, COPA-KB contains a total of 413 known associations between protein function and cardiac disease. These associations were retrieved from online Mendelian inheritance in man web service and from peer-reviewed publication via PubMed search. Next, the, there are a total 10,924 uh, immunofluorescent and uh, immunohistochemistry images which are retrieved from the human protein, uh, protein atlas. differential expression of gene transcript was integrated from gene expression atlas and gene ontology annotations were obtained using Uniprod and Quick, uh, QuickGo 
service. The relationship among uh, different goal terms were uh, delineated using ontology lookup service by Envoy API. Furthermore, uh, we incorporate the Psyche web service to retrieve the protein-protein interaction data uh, from databases in the International Molecular Exchange Consortium. And lastly, we utilize the Reactum web service to extract human pathway data. Uh, Copa KB offers uh, bioinformatics tools in addition to modules and phenotypic data. Uh, we develop novel spectral library search algorithm. Uh, when user perform the MZML search and submit their raw data, their data is submit, uh, subjected to a novel workflow uh, to enhance protein identification. Uh, this workflow is divided into two uh, separate portions. So the first part is for the spectral library construction for each module to use as a reference. Uh, to construct spectral library, first uh, in the left, uh, the spectra in the left, left side, uh, first select spectrum with, with the highest cross correlation score for each peptide. And then we uh, create the noisy control spectra, which is on your right, uh, the spectra in the right side. So in the second, uh, we create noisy control spectra from, from the selected spectra. Uh, and uh, to construct the noisy, noisy control spectra, we remove peaks of A, B, and Y ions and neutral loss. So two spectra for a, for a peptide, one is reference spectrum, which is in the left, uh, left, which is located in the left panel, and the other is a noisy decoy spectrum, which is located in the right panel, were stored in our uh, spectral library. That's how we construct our uh, spectral library. And the second part is for the algorithm of the spectrum match. Uh, we created noisy control algorithm to compare reference spectra and noisy decoy spectra to, to the query spectra. So, it, so in, in the spectra match in the left side, uh, once the user uh, submit their query spectra, it, it uh, measure the top, the correlation score between the reference spectra and the query spectra. And and the correlation score is named dot product. And the right side, the noisy dot product, which is a correlation score between noisy decoy spectrum and query spectrum, is measured. So the noisy dot product calculates uh, the contribution of noisy pits toward the overall assessment. The dot product provides an overall assessment of their similarity and noisy dot product uh, provides uh, some, some uh, noisy dot product calculates the contribution of a noisy peak uh, toward the assessment. So thereby, the difference between dot product and noisy dot product value uh, highlights signals representing characteristic fragments from the peptide precursor. And with this uh, strategy, we demonstrated that our noisy control strategy uh, significantly increased the sensitivity and it's, it decreased error for the protein identification. Uh, in, in addition to the spectral library search tool, Currently, we engineer the post-analysis post workflow for, for use by a COPA KB, which are interactome analysis and pathway analysis. So in, in this pipeline, uh, users submit MZML, users submit MZML data for the protein identification 
And once the files are transferred to the Kopakevi server, spectral library search engine identifies the proteins. Uh, for interactome post, uh, post analysis, uh, we utilize Psychic API to find the interacting partners of the identified proteins. The, the result uh, is displayed in table view and also the graphical viewer. And, and after the phase one, uh, topological clustering of interactome uh, will be performed and 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 then a gene ontology enrichment and pathway enrichment analysis oh sorry pathway enrichment analysis for each cluster will be performed to have the integrative understanding of the their cardiac proteome data for the pathway analysis uh, we incorporate reactome apis which is a, a developed by Antonio uh, to perform uh, to perform the pathway enrichment analysis for the identified proteins. The after perform the analysis, the name of the enriched in, enriched pathway and the significance of it will be displayed in the table view. And once you click name of the pathway, uh, it will redirect you to the graphical viewer. Yes, uh, so, and then I'm going to quickly go over the demonstration of the Copa KB usage. Uh, before I go over, uh, is there any, uh, do you have any questions so far? Okay, uh, then, I will briefly go over the demonstration of Copa KB usage. So uh, for the MS data submission, first you fill out uh, the requirements. So uh, put the email address and select the reference module and upload your MS spec data. And, and, then, uh, and then click upload search. Uh, once you submit the data, you will receive the task ID uh, from Kupa KB uh, for your for your analysis, and you can use the task ID to share your analyzed result and data with your colleagues. So once the spectra search is done, uh, you are enabled to see the report. Uh, in the report, the identified proteins are listed on the left panel. So, as you can see, all the identified proteins will, uh, are listed on on left side. And by clicking the small icon in front of the besides the protein, you'll be able to see the corresponding peptides. And in the right panel, uh, there are basic information of uh, your analysis. And all the bioinformatic functionalities are located on each tab. Uh, in the first tab, uh, in the first tab, uh, the identified proteins are sorted by the abundance in descending order. So basically, use a normalized spectral abundance vector, which is an NSAF, uh, to sort out uh, uh, the proteins. Uh, in the next step, uh, is for the pathway enrichment analysis. So, as I previously said, uh, Copa KB employs a RESTful uh, web service on of the newly developed Reactome API. Uh, to generate generate uh, the table and so basically it takes a list of the protein as an input and the output will be the name of the enriched path, uh, pathways 
with an indicator of their significance, such as a p-value or FDR. And each uh, pathway name is linked to a reactome pathway browser for the visualization. So if you click the name of the pathway, it directly uh, it directly uh, move you to <clears throat> move you to the reactome browser, and you'll be able to see the the the, the pathway that you click. And this page will open in a new window or a new tab. The next tab is for the protein-protein interaction analysis. Uh, CopaKB employs a scikit RESTful web service to generate table view. Uh, the input is the list of the identified protein as well. And the output is the old interaction partners of the input proteins with relevant information such as organism or uh, the detection method. And we incorporate the Cytoscape JS to visualize the interactome result uh, from the previous table. This is the screenshot of the, uh, our visualization tool. And you can also see the, it also displays, uh, display a genotology of the identified proteins. So you can see the list of the biological processes on, on, the, on the top. And you'll be able to highlight a protein and its interacting partners in a circular view by uh, checking uh, each biological process in a circle of view. Uh, yes, and, and if you are interested in uh, some particular protein, then and user will be able to see the detail, detailed protein information, including uh, relevance of car cardiac disease, a distinct peptide, expression profile, and references. So you can see the basic information of some particular protein, and then you can go to that page by clicking uh, each protein. So basically, the, uh, it, it, the basic information is including uh, sequences, uh, molecular weight, and a gene, gene symbol, uh, et cetera. And you can uh, zoom in each distinct peptide in a graphical view. And in the first tab, uh, shows the known association between the protein function and the cardiac disease. In the second tab, uh, it shows the distinct peptide of, of the protein and the third tab shows the expression profile images, which is a immunofluorescent image and immunohistochemistry image. In the fourth tab, uh, it will give the all interacting partners of that protein. And the fifth tab, uh, uh, it will show, uh, it will uh, display the all the, the, the protein and their interacting partners in a graphical view room. And at that point, it's a dynamic called graphical view rooms. And if you are interested in looking at actual spectra, definitely you, you, can, uh, you, you can go to the spectra match by clicking uh, the, pep, the peptide. And you will see the Rorikat view of that peptide. Yes, uh, uh, and from now on, uh, Vincent will briefly go over the API development. Hi, uh, I'll just quickly go over the, the development. Um, so we're currently working on uh, our, base, our APIs. 
Um, but we're, we're still in the initial phases of development. Um, while we do have uh, existing uh, SOAP API, uh, we decided to create a RESTful API instead uh, just because it's easier to use and it's more preferred by users. Um, the API will be hosted on our website, heartproteum.org, and we'll have a standardized output uh, where we'll be using uh, JSON. Um, in terms of the API functionality, uh, for now, the API will provide three different functions. Uh, these functions uh, are similar to the functionality that the website already provides, which includes a protein annotation service, a peptide annotation service, and an MZML analysis retrieval. Um, and uh, as for the, the, da the MS data file and TCA search and spectrum uh, precursor search, uh, that will be created in the future. Uh, but for now, we'll focus on uh, the three functionalities that I just mentioned. Um, but uh, if you want to know more about the, our API, uh, I'll be sending out uh, another email uh, containing the slides and the documentation uh, for the API. And with regards to the BD2K project, um, uh, we are, we're developing new informatics tools, uh, more specifically uh, a big data processing tool for uh, spectral-based PCM analyses and also a multi-scale modeling tool for clinical knowledge aggregation. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, we'll be creating APIs to allow for collaboration among other uh, informatics tools. And uh, we'll also be collaborating with a number of tools to develop the interfaces uh, specified in our grant proposal. Um, and this includes the data discovery interface, the expression interface, and the reverse expression interface. Um, so I'll just give a quick summary. Um, so the current features that we provide uh, include um, high quality cardiac proteomic data, um, with uh, relevant cardiovascular phenotypes and also uh, bioinformatics tools. And for our future developments, um, we're hoping to provide API, API to share our uh, data and our tools. And we're hoping to um, expand our platform uh, to other biomedical fields in the future. Uh, thank you for listening uh, to our presentation. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Andrew Sue here. So, a uh, question. Um, so, primarily CopaKP is for analyzing single samples, is that right? Or do you have functionality right to do essentially differential analysis on the proteomics level? So, so it only takes a one MZML uh, at a time, but it, definitely you can upload uh, several MZML files, but it will analyze uh, one at a time. And we are, so, and then in uh, some way we try to, uh, so we don't have a statistical uh, tools to compare uh, let's say uh, disease versus control yet, but yeah, definitely we will. Uh, we plan to. We we will. We are think, thinking about to put some analytical, uh, statistical, uh, a function to compare the differential uh, the comparison. Is is it what you're? What's your question? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm driving at. I yeah, mean, I, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's I know. Uh, yeah, that is our. Uh, I think uh, we point that we we are uh, we get the uh, merging multiple uh, experiments, but we are planning to merge those uh, uh, multiple experiments. Did, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, Maybe I could help also a bit more. I think as Pavor has stated, at the current stage, it's not designed to host uh, characterization of 
multiple samples in parallel or to have any kind of scientific prediction. And also it has no features on um, any kind of uh, RNA uh, data that may impact the spectral data. So most of the theoretic spectral, you know, the one created by John Sequest or Matthias Mann mascot, these are all genomic database. And if there's any kind of RNA data addition uh, that created modification of the cDNA outcome, those spectral analysis were not considered. So on a roughly rate, 80 percent, as far as high as 78 of percent of spectral from any experimental models are not identified. So this, this issue, the RNA sequence data modification issue, as well as multi-sample parallel comparison issue, were all sort of mentioned but not detailed in the DSR plan. However, we are collaborating with two other groups on campus trying to respond to the RSA of the BB2K and targeting just these two specific issues. But it, it will be sort of related to the DISR of our center, but with additional, hopefully, funding from other sources. Great. Sounds good. I mean, I think, uh, just so you know, right, we uh, specifically regarding the comparison to RNA databases, uh, I mean, clearly that works as far as DNA databases as well. So, you know, one of the things that we proposed in the proposal is actually <coughs> using the Welderly data as another reference data source. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so that's something that's in progress on our end. And then also we have a postdoc who's just also, in addition to Welderly, just taken all the genomic sequences out of the Thousand Genomes Project and essentially use that to create um, you know, peptide libraries for referencing. So that, that would be one area of, of, of that, interaction. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So for the Wilderly, you will have the RNA seq data as well, right? Um, I don't know. All your, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, there, there's no RNA seq data. There's a very, I mean, we have lymphoblast lines for maybe a few, a few lines. Uh, uh -huh. no, but it's nowhere near uh, complete. Look, no, we don't have RNA seq data. But on the other hand, one thing to add to the uh, peptide library thing is uh, for the Welderly, 200 of those samples are phased data, so you'd be able to make you know true uh, phased proteins rather than trying to come up with what the actual combinations are, which you don't have in even the thousand genomes data for multiple amino acid substitutions, we'd have them in the world early. Oh, that's excellent. That's great. Uh, so that means we could uh, create uh, another parallel stack of the library. So currently, the Kava KB library is either a real spectra that's been ID'd, uh, plus a sort of uh, an interim spectral library that's not been completely ID, but it may be possible to ID with PTM modification. But if we also have yours uh, from additional, you said it's uh, protein peptide developed libraries, then we will have a third library. What it does is it receives spectral samples and it searches against each of these libraries. I've actually got a question on these libraries. So clearly, I, well, I would guess already now these libraries, because they've been generated from specific experiments and are of a high quality, they are probably a value in itself. Um, but I don't find anywhere where you can download these libraries. Is this something you are planning, especially given the BD2K focus on open data? Uh, I, we have no 
objection of actually open up all the libraries. It's a process, but it, that's our goal as completely open resource. So uh, the only caveat is the human data library. We're going through the IRB reviews and see how they would approve us to have it available. If they say completely DID, you can openly share, we will. Um, but all the mouse data and Drosophila data and C. elegans, 100%, we, we will have them as open source. I think that's good, and that's something we should also emphasize at some point. Sure. Sure. Because that's uh, something uh, both uh, Howard, you know, he leads the Kaba KB with Vince and others. We want to discuss uh, with you and Antonio on, on this trip is how do we best open up all these resources also in conjunction uh, with all the data currently stored in price. Mm -hmm. I have to mute now. I have to. Okay, uh, no problem. Um, so this, this is a really good discussion. Uh, we'll other questions or are we out of time? Yeah, uh, you can uh, email either uh, email the questions and then we'll save the discussion for uh, next week um, so that we can, I mean this is a really good discussion, um, but uh, we'll move on to our next presentation for now um, so that we, so everyone can uh, hear the presentation and then uh, we'll save the, the questions and discussion uh, for the next uh, meeting so that we can have a continue our discussion. Does that sound good? I'm typing them into the comment box now. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll move on to our next uh, presentation. Uh, so our next presentation will be about ProTurn, and it will be presented by uh, Tevik Dinser and Brian Blickley. Um So without further ado, uh, let's begin. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Tefik Dimser uh, and Brian and I will be talking about ProTurn today which is a protein turnover analysis tool for uh, heavy water labeled mass spectrometry data. Uh, I'm Tefik Dimser, um, I'm the primary developer for ProTurn and I've been a part of the group for uh, almost a year now, about uh, 10 months and I have a Master of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. And Brian here? Yes, uh, I'm the um, Training and Consortium Project um, Manager for B2K, um, but prior to that I was a uh, ProTrend developer and I'm still working on ProTrend. And also we have uh, Hannah, who uh, as mentioned in the last presentation is also a Copa KB uh, developer. Uh, let's see, so what is ProTurn? Uh, ProTurn is a modeling application that enables us to assess the changing program of a subject through heavy water labeling. So uh, most analysis tools uh, will only um, analyze a single sample, um, but ProTurn is designed to uh, analyze and provide insights for a whole series of, a time series of samples from the same subject. Uh, we use it for cardiology, but we believe it's widely applicable to um, uh, large-scale studies of human disease mechanisms uh, in other disciplines. Okay, I'm going to briefly over, go, go over the experimental setup. Uh, so we have a human and uh, mouse subjects um, in, ingesting heavy water, and as you can see here uh, in row C, uh, for these human subjects, the uh, body water makeup slowly increases up to about uh, 2% um, over a period of two weeks when ingesting heavy water. And um, what that does is that shows in the, um, in the uh, mass specs, uh, these peaks will start to shift to the right over time. Um, and the way we quantify that, we take the, uh, the lightest or the mass isotopomer, which would be M0, and we take the ratio of that uh, M0 to all the other mass isotopomers. Um, so you see down here in point D, we've got a uh, M0 to MI ratio. 
And over this two-week period, <coughs> excuse me, over that two-week period, uh, the M0 to MI ratio is decreasing. Um, and we, we use that to calculate the exact rate of turnover for specific proteins. And here you can see uh, for different human subjects, uh, the different turnover rates um, for a variety of uh, proteins. Uh, we have two different uh, mathematical models to calculate the turnover rate. We have one for a mouse and one for a human. Um, uh, the, the mouse is just, uh, just simply injected with heavy water, so its um, body water is uh, instantaneously enriched, but because the human has to adjust over a period of time, um, the amount of heavy water slowly builds up in their system, and then those um, uh, deuterium atoms are slowly uh, incorporated into the proteins. So um, it, it turns into a, a, a nonlinear um, uh, enrichment model. Uh, are there any, any questions about the, the general experiment? <coughs> okay, uh, Tavik will uh, take it from here. Um, so our tool takes uh, five different kinds of inputs. So we have uh, support for the ProLucid DTA select workflow, also the sequest and the protein discover, max grant and mascot. And we, uh, we get the raw um, spectral data in uh, MZML format. So here is a typical workflow. At the beginning, we have two kinds of input files, the MZML files and the input files, which could be a ProLucid DTA file or Sequest and such. And then we go into the integration step uh, in which we integrate over retention time to calculate each protein abundance for each time point. So at day zero, we have a time point. At day three, we have a time point and uh, all the way up to day 14 or more, uh, depending on your experiment. And, and we, have, we get these uh, time points for each and every identified uh, protein in, our, uh, in the sample. Uh, then we go into the curve fitting uh, uh, step. And in here, we take the time dependence of the of the abundance into account and we fit either the mass model or the human model into, into the data. And the final step is uh, displaying the, uh, the results and I will go over them briefly, each one of them. So in the integration step, this is what the ProTurn uh, graphical user interface looks like. Uh, on the left panel, you can uh, input your parameters for the experiment and on the right side you can see uh, the, the process and, uh, and uh, how far into the computation we are. So on the upper left side, the blue uh, box, you input your data and on the, in the green box, you uh, apply your integration parameters, which are the mass window, the minimum area for the MS peak, the number of smoothing points and the smoothing option. I'm not going to get into detail for these, uh, e for each one of these parameters, but uh, feel free to ask if you're planning to use ProTurn in your experiments as well, and I, I would be glad to explain in detail what each parameter does. Um, Brian will. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So this this is a plot uh, just shows. So in addition to calculating the turnover rates, you can also see um, the changes in the protein composition. So you see each one of these colors here um, is. Uh, a different, a different protein, and you can see like what, what fraction of the sample that these proteins make up. Uh, the two largest here are just a hemoglobin, A and B. You can, but you can see, for example, in this data that the, uh, this gray protein here, the uh, P32199, uh, the, you know, that's diminishing uh, throughout the experiment. Um, so I'll go on and talk about the curve fitting step. So the parameters are the R squared threshold, uh, which is the minimum coefficient of determination that we allow for our high quality uh, data. So this is a measure of how well the data fits our model. So uh, if, the, if the data does not fit very well or if there is a lot of noise for some reason, we discard uh, that protein or the peptide and uh, uh, we just go on without that. 
And there are some other quality control mechanisms in place, like the minimum data points and the minimum time points. Uh, the steady state precursor enrichment and the precursor turnover rate are obtained from the experiment. And um, this is what you essentially uh, input based on your measurements. And we also have an option to include protein modifications, the post-translation modifications uh, in the analysis or not. And that is uh, also allowed to, uh, to change. Uh, we have a few curve fitting types uh, on the upper right. So we have the steady state curve fitting type, which is for the mass model, and the non-steady state for the human model. And there's also another option, which is a non-steady state with free variables. This is what you would use if you don't know, for whatever reason, the steady state precursor enrichment and the precursor turnover rate uh, for experiments. So the algorithm will try to optimize these variables as well to make uh, to make the best fit. Uh, here is what the results uh, look like. So here we have two different kinds of uh, proteins and uh, each peptide is given here. All the turnover rates and all the other data. And when you click on the display graphs button, uh, you will get the graphs output. Here we see the P, uh, so the highlighted peptide uh, has a pretty good fit with the model. And here you can also do some uh, quality control as well and filter the results. Uh, this is the comparisons interface. And this allows you to compare, for example, the control group and the experimental group and do all kinds of uh, statistical analysis on them. And, uh, and up to six different data groups uh, can be compared with the primary group. So it would be a 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, and such. Um, okay, uh, so possible future directions uh, for taking protein for V2K. Um, <clears throat> so integrate through reverse expression interface, uh, CoKV and Pride. This is a, the tricky part. So uh, this, this table here you can see is from the, uh, from the grant um, and lists one of the new interfaces uh, as reverse expression interface. So um, this was the other two all connect together. Um, you know, a user could take uh, <coughs> take the MZML files or raw files from their experiment, uh, put them on Pride. Then theoretically, they could use CobaKB to uh, to search those those um, MZML files, identify specific proteins, and um, you know that process data could be stored in Pride. And then these various different analysis tools, uh, you know, like Proturn, Reactome. To be used to analyze analyze the data. Uh, uh, so, so we're also oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so other ideas in the pipeline are to integrate uh, Proturn into Copa KB, and which uh, in fact makes Proturn a web service. Uh, so you would be able to retrieve all the data you need from Copa KB. So instead of using the DTA select and the ProLucid workflow you would be able to do a library search uh, with the CopaKB and get all the data you need uh, there. Uh, also uh, uh, being worked on is R integration to leverage the extensive statistical library R offers. And one other advantage of using R is publication quality graph outputs uh, that we intend to, um, uh, to use. Um, so if you would like to inquire more about the ProTurn or our projects in general, uh, feel free to follow these links. And uh, further information about the ProTurn models uh, can be obtained from the supplementary document uh, on the paper uh, our group has published last year. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes the presentation. Feel free to ask questions now. And also, we can, if there's not that many questions, we can address some of the KB questions that were brought up during the presentation. So uh, uh, this is Andrew again. So I'll, I'll start. So with ProTurn, um, realizing you just published this, I mean, um, do you have any sense about uh, other groups using it, right? I mean, as we think about BD2K, 
We want to think about infrastructure that gets used widely. I mean, I guess I'm trying to put ProTurn on that spectrum since it does require so you know a specific experimental design. Um, so this uh, this paper focuses on uh, on using ProTurn for uh, for cardiac data in in particular heart remodeling uh, data, but uh, this tool can be used for a wide array of different protein applications as well. So you could be investigating other diseases or other other phenotypes and such. Right, uh, but but uh, ProTurn is not is not currently being used uh, at other laboratories. Um. Okay. So what was, I'm sorry, I, I just got back home. What was the question? It was just a question of, um, you know, how, how widely, you know, again, understanding that it was just published, how widely ProTurn uh, is being used uh, at the moment. Uh, just from the standpoint of, uh, you know, how we prioritize the different uh, tools we're trying to integrate. Right. So there's, there's regarding ProTurn, there are uh, just one uh, logistic uh, issue. Uh, we do plan to have it widely used. Uh, that's the design, as uh, Brian and uh, Tavik have stated. But ProTurn was developed before this whole BD2K concept. And so UCLA does have a patent on it. It's not a preliminary filing. It's a it's the entire thing that has approved. And so all of this happened two years ago. And so at this moment, uh, it can be open source, but I think it's a matter that the interested party had to go through UCLA to sign a couple of page documents or something uh, for you to acquire the software. But we have been approached by other laboratories to work on it through a collaborative effort. Um, for example, three of the laboratories that actually joint have an interest is the NHLBI intramural group. Uh, they also study mitochondria in different organs, not necessarily the heart, but a variety of different host cells. Um, I, do, I don't know how to <coughs> best uh, overcome this issue because, um, as I said, this is sort of dealing with the history. Um, Okay, well, I mean, I think, you know, I don't think that's a problem we need, or, you know, an issue we need to solve now. I think it's just good to know what the, the current status is, so thanks for the clarification. Yeah. I, I maybe had one other question, and maybe this one's directed a little bit more towards Henning. I, I mean, you know, I like the model where, you know, that you, that, uh, you guys outlaid where, you know, something goes into proteome exchange and then, you know, using the expression interface, I think, or reverse expression interface, I don't know which one, but, I mean, it would, you know, programmatically send this through you know, ProTurn or something like that. But it does depend a little bit on proteome exchange, essentially understanding the type of experiment that's been run, right? I mean, you know, in RNA-seq, it's pretty simple, right? You just have really one flavor of RNA-seq. But with proteomics, right, you could be doing spectral counting, you could be isotope labeling, you could be doing something like ProTurn's experimental design. So to what degree does proteome exchange have knowledge of essentially you know, this, the, the type of experiment that was done? So clearly the type of experiment should be part of the annotation, uh, should be part of the submission to a proteome exchange. I think this is one of the key experimental parameters which we definitely want to capture. So that's one part of the answer. But the other part of the answer is that I don't see that everything has to go through proteome exchange. So I would much rather see this as we allow a nice workflow where something is submitted to proteome exchange and then can be passed on to analysis tools. But all of the analysis tools obviously should also be accessible directly. So this is very much like the current um, reactome analysis interface work. So you can 
either upload your tap delimited file directly into React Home and do the React Home analysis, but we also provide web service access so that you can um, directly access it from Pride or currently from one other um, project, uh, which is also a joint EU US project um, blueprint. And so it's not that you are tied to this. This is only so that we enable a good workflow between the different components we develop, but it should not be exclusive. It should be one option. Yeah, I think that's a great point, and I agree 100%. I, I was just more thinking about the bridge between, you know, the uh, data repositories that our consortium helps develop, like Proteome Exchange and, and um, the uh, expression interface and so forth, and, and the tools like ProTurn. Like, for example, right, suppose somebody had a spectral counting experiment. You know, we need to know that the send to ProTurn, as just an example, button should be not be there unless it was, you know, through the, you know, done with the experimental design that the ProTurn software would understand. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand what you mean, and I think we have to figure out as we go forward what the precise answer is, whether the answer is the system is clever enough not to offer options, or whether we say we require the operator to be clever enough not to use these options. And I think the answer might be somewhere in the middle or might be a case-by-case -case distinction. Okay. Um, yeah, I just mentioned what it's on. But you can, you can talk. You can just say it. Uh, uh, Henning? Yep. Uh, so you asked uh, one question, right? Two. Uh, yeah, two questions. Uh, so the, the answer for the first question, uh, the pathway analysis tab is for the pathway enrichment analysis using uh, Reactum API. And the Reactum Pathways tab only shows a list of the involved pathways uh, of the identified proteins. So both tabs uh, actually uh, utilize the Reactum resources. So that's why, uh, yeah, maybe we, uh, we will change the name of the tab to make it more clear. I think there's um, two points why I, I'm asking about this. So one is yes, it's if you don't know, um, well, no, if you don't know the details, then it's very difficult to understand why one is named like one, one like the other. Mm -hmm. um, and the other is that they kind of surround the interactions tab. So it might be, um, there might be some room for improvement in terms of user guidance, but we have had a similar issue in React Home, and I know it's not easy. I just wanted to, find, to point it out, and I don't even have a good answer, name it this and this. Um, it's just something which, yeah, is not uh, easy to figure out. Yes, and uh, we uh, incorporate the side of Scape.js. It's, uh, uh, very easy to use, and uh, we expect, uh, and and then we kind of expect the the it, it could be uh, very slow, uh, very uh, clear uh, graphics, but it could be slow. But I we didn't see any uh, problem with the, <coughs> the velocity. Okay, that's excellent to know. So basically, you've been you are happy with your usage of it. Yes. Good. That's good to know. Uh, so, answer to the Andrew Hughes question. So, gene expression atlas is a it uh, it changed the name. So, it's an expression atlas of the EBI tool. 
Um, to answer the second part of the question, the GTEx data will be available through the Expression Atlas 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, so ProTurn uh, output formats. Uh, outputs, um, uh, tab delimited text files uh, that go to Excel. Um, also uh, SVG output and PDF outputs for the, uh, for the graphs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, further questions? So uh, we'll we'll give you all some time to you know absorb all this information, um, take it all in, and I will post uh, th this uh, meeting online so you guys uh, can uh, view it if you need to, and then we can continue the discussion uh, next next meeting um, uh, if needed. Uh, but next, for next meeting, uh, we will be having uh, Reactome uh, as our uh, main presentation. So there's, there's only going to be uh, one presentation, and uh, so it's going to be Reactome, and we'll have uh, a discussion uh, afterwards. Are there any uh, questions about that? Okay, uh, that sounds good. So, um, right now we'll uh, conclude the presentations portion, and uh, and as of now, uh, we'll go into any open questions or discussions that you you may have uh, re regarding the project. So, uh, if not, you guys, if you don't have any questions or anything, you guys uh, can uh, can leave. But uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we'll send out an email with all the updates and the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And thanks for very tight uh, chairing. I think it worked very well. Uh, if you want, I could show a quick uh, a quick uh, example of the, of the output format for um, ProTurn. Uh, so you can see it just lists um, the different proteins by their by the Uniprot ID. The names it, it looks up online um, through Unipro, and then it lists all these different parameters, and it's all just tab limited, so it's easy to parse with Excel or. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, so we can we can stay on the line and, and continue to talk about ProTurn or CoPKB or anything else. Uh, so yeah, like this is a good format that's easy to parse, you know, by by R, MATLAB, or Excel or anything. Um, MZ, okay, and MZ tab, yeah, we, we could look into, um, yeah, supporting other kinds of uh, output formats. I, I just read the overview. Um, it it could be a good fit. Uh, we will definitely uh, look into it more. Thank you very much for your suggestion.
Okay, uh, so we'll stay on the line for uh, at least another uh, 30 minutes. Um,